Hello, this is John Spielman with the video version of this week's or this fortnight's um, column and I've called it Overthinking the Silence. <coughs> it's basically, it's about the problems you face when you have to make a decision and you aren't under pressure or not under immediate pressure. So you have to decide whether to do something or to wait or what to do. And what I've said is that chess is played, I'm just going to check first that I have got uh, the recording on and I have good. Chess is, as played between human beings is both a technical and a psychological battle. And once players become reasonably proficient at the technical side, obviously they have to be good enough to play decent chess or it doesn't matter how good they are psychologically. Then the psychological one becomes equally important. Decision making isn't that hard as such when there are forced lines, since you just have to do your best at calculating them and make a choice. But in the space that precedes hand to hand combat, it becomes much more a case of how you feel. Excuse me. So, there may be a decent move which improves your pos possession, either moving a piece to a better square, or allegedly, and up allegedly is important, upgrading your pawn structure. And you must remember always though that pawns can't move backwards. So when you play a move to improve your pawn structure, you may have made it worse as well. Um, or you may have to make a choice between waiting and initiating concrete action. The eerie silence before battle is perhaps the most difficult moment psychologically, and one way in which stronger players often outplay a weaker but good, but good ones is by persuading them to break the equilibrium and move too soon. In a balanced position, it's quite possible that the best course is to do nothing well, and that's really difficult. Uh, but in chesses and everything else, people yearn for certainty, and so there's a strong inclination to clarify matters, even among the world's very best players. <laughs> but I said I thought about this when I watched a couple of Magnus Carlsen games from the FTX Cup. Carlsen was really out of form. I mean, it's a fantastic. He managed to win the tournament <coughs> when he was so out of form. And um, he um, was very patchy and anyway. we played some good games, we played some horrible games. And then I went on to two of them where when he had a chance to, to do something, he chose to do the wrong thing. Um, and so, <coughs> excuse me, it's a bit hay fever here today, nothing to do with the glorious COVID. Let us go here and let us look at column147.pgn. So we start with Nakamura Carson, which is some sort of Roy Lopez. It's a Berlin, but a slightly funny one. And so white has gained the, the two bishops, but black is, is extremely solid. And that says nothing and something as well. OK. So here or the next move, black could have, Carson could have played knight a5 to get the bishops off. And it's absolutely playable to do that. Um, it clearly can't be a very bad idea. Um, I don't know if you go knight a5, bishop a4, maybe c4 to try to trap the knight, or conceivably, but it's a bit, it's all a bit odd. Um, or knight a5, a4, um, knight a5, I mean, I suppose you could play a4, but then c6, and that's pointless. You could play c4, uh, a bit odd, c4, it's just about possible, I suppose, because now taking is going to leave the knight offside, but you can just go knight, knight c6 and you've persuaded him to play the not particularly great move, um, c4. Okay, it's just, it's, it's all possible. Um, anyway, what happened was Carson played knight e7, took some white squares on the queen's side and about now he is trying to make Nakamura do something. He's saying I'm attacking your e-pawn, if you play a quiet move I might take on d4, it's certainly quite possible, queen takes, I don't know, d5 might even just equalise then very easily. And um, so <coughs> what are you going to do about it? And Nakamura thought for about a minute and he played, I don't know if it's a good move, but it's a very good move psychologically, knight d2, because it makes Carson decide what to do. Oh, there's b4 as well, actually, is possibly a move, which I think I 
Is B4 a decent move? I think B4 is not a bad move actually. Um, D takes C5, B takes C3, takes, 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 takes. Well, this looks slightly better for white, maybe. Six plays six, yeah. Um, that's also possible. Um, and after a long time, I thought Carson might play something like Queen B8 to play Queen A7 to put more pressure on D4. On D4. But in fact, he played D5. He took about half his remaining time, about seven minutes to do that. So Knight D2, which was not a bad move, certainly, had uh, won seven minutes on the clock, and it produced a not, not that great a response. Knight E4 was what Carsten intended. Knight E5 F4 was a bad idea, I think. Rook E5, um, I should say, played almost instantly. Almost instantly. Instantly. Um, rook E5 is interesting. Then if Knight F3, you can just go Rook E8 and nothing really happens very much. E5, Knight E4 should be okay for black. You can play F4 and then, then there's this line, which ends up with... Um, Black having a lot of play for the exchange. He's going to have two pawns. He should be okay, I think. Um, you know, you can wonder about whether you can do something, but what happens? Takes, takes. He's not going rookie seven, is he? I haven't calculated this very much. Takes, takes, rookie seven. Oh, sorry, I'm leaving a bit... Sorry, I'm just talking crap. Excuse me. Talking absolute rubbish. Because I'm not watching... Uh, okay, let, 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 let's just, I'm sorry about that, delete remaining moves. And yeah, he's got reasonable play. Okay, f4 happened, now knight f4, obviously, I should say knight takes f4, question mark. Knight takes e4, and you have to go knight g2 or something. And it really isn't King G2. Takes, takes, and it's winning. For, it's winning for White. Very good for White, anyway. So, what happened was that um, Black had an active looking position, but not much to do with it. I think H5 would have been a good idea now, just to. Because if you play this position without the H pawns, you must have more drawing chances. But actually, um, what happened was that e3, rook d4, very good move. And basically white's going to win a pawn. And it's deeply unpleasant. Um, whether it's winning, I don't know. Probably is winning, actually. I think Sese thinks it is. Did I, did I suggest c5 takes, rook d5, rook b4, check, f2. Um, okay, that should be winning. And if king g5, you can just go rook f1, take an f7 and push an e4 and you should win. So he went back and there was some faffing. He played very well actually, uh, Nakamura this game. c5, I'll give that an exclam. If you take, you just lose the rook of the pawn ending. And he won it. Well played. I mean, he, he did this very well. So, but this all stems back to d5, which was possibly not that bad a decision, but it put a lot of pressure on Carson to play well after that. And it's the fact that Nakamura gave Carson a choice and refused to, dis to, to clear the tension himself, to resolve the tension himself which led to this, I would say. Okay, that's one game. The next game is with Wesley So, um, also Carson. They played this um, in this sharp line. Three. 
In the previous game, so had played queen c2, bishop f5, queen b3, and Carlson got a good possession and later won. Um, Carlson played very well. But this time he went h3. You can take an f3, but white gets the two bishops um, after pawn takes. They're pretty good bishops, really. Okay, it's a position. You can play it. Um, so now Carson had to choose. And I think that in a bullet game, as I said, he'd take, I think for about a second, I said 0.2 of a second, that's probably an exaggeration, and play knight e7 and be absolutely fine. But he had time to think. He thought for six and a half minutes and he went bishop a5. So it's overthinking the silence is the what I've called it. And now c6 is a mistake. Should go knight g5 at once. It's not a particularly pleasant position. And now he is already lost according to Sese. Basically because the king side is a complete disaster area. And he tried knight c4 and got a tiny, tiny bit of play for a moment, but it really wasn't going to work. Um, and I gave this line. And white wins a knight. What does he win a knight? Because of rook e6. Um, I thought this was simpler than that. Why is this so simple? Our rook e6. I think knight e7 is the move, isn't it? Is that the point? Knight f7. I just rook d8. Okay, sorry. Okay, takes, takes. I'm being a bit stupid again. It's difficult when, when you have this engine here, your brain goes a bit soggy. And what happened was that they played this and Queen G7 check won everything. And Carson resigned. So again, this all stems back uh, to him playing Bishop A5. And he had time to think of a bad move and play it. Convince himself, not a particularly good move anyway, and play it. So, you know, I know he was in bad form. And, you know, it happens, of course. It's really tough playing half a million rapid play games in nine days. Must make your brain utterly soggy. But there we are. So finally, I'm going to show you what I've called the Immortal Bullshit Game. It's, um, I should say thank you to my stream for reminding me of this game. I was thinking of games to add to this column after these two Carson games. And somebody... Uh, told me, reminded me of this game, and I thought, yeah, well done, mate. A uh, guy called Guillaume, I think. And this is a game where Basman was still playing proper openings then. He is, of course, as I've added, the hero of the, the Grob, the Borg, which is the Grob backwards, B-R-O-G is G-R-O-B backwards, and is E4, G5. And E4, A6, and in fact, he's beaten me as black years ago with both the Borg and the, the, the St. George E4A6. He's a wonderful player but doesn't like to be attacked. Uh, okay, so Ulf got a nice advantage. C5 is not terribly good. And Ulf Basman just said, all right, come on Grandmaster, show me. And the cheek of it, the Armenian cheek of it, of course he's British, British, but originally from Armenia, is wonderful to behold. Wolf is starting to advance pawns, which he never does. He hates advancing pawns. And he's thinking, I'm going to checkmate this guy. I want to checkmate this guy. But the guy is fighting. Um, he should have played... Round about here, he should have played um, knight a4 to get a nice square for his horse in c5. That would have made life a lot lot more pleasant for him. I think that, that would have been what he should have done. Um, okay. Now, now Black's okay. Black's much worse, but he's not lost. Nothing's happened. I don't know if King G3 is a great move. 
And now it starts to become difficult for White. White isn't going to give mate, and if he isn't going to give mate, then what's he doing? Doesn't like this move. Engine's still like Quincy 3, but Ulfa must have been really upset by now. Now he has horrible pawns. And I don't know if he's got time for h5. Has he got time for h5? Um, h5 is the move you want to play to, to save your pawn structure. Take, take, d7, d1. Yeah, I mean h5 would have kept his pawns. Okay, so that's. But he, now black gets an h5, and it's already really dangerous, really dangerous position. Even if it's playable, it doesn't matter. That's a mistake. Knight d7, bishop d7, king g3 was still playable just. If ugly. And it now all starts to go completely pear-shaped for white. And Basman played c5, which actually is not that great a move. Because after pawn takes d4, queen d2, queen to here, king to there, it's glam. And the point is... Sense of queen, of, queen h3... Rook h1, I believe, is the point. That is the point, isn't it? Three question mark. Okay, but I mean, it was really difficult. Really unpleasant after you've had that huge advantage. He didn't even take the rook now. He could just have taken the rook. He would have been winning, but he went here even stronger taking the rook um, let's, have, let's have a diagram here I mean I, I assume that queen takes c1 is winning should be winning I think but I mean what can fight And Basman slaughtered him in the approved manner. And there, there we are. And that is, in some, some, I mean, Black's play, once he decided that he couldn't do anything immediately, he kept it completely tight wound white up to the sticking point and remember that Ulf Anderson hates advancing pawns but he felt he had to he couldn't see what else to do he couldn't find a way to advance without to, 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 to win the game without advancing Ulf advanced and advanced it all went wrong after h5 even if it's playable it's disgusting after black gets an h5 and all look to shadow of his normal self. So a brilliant game by Basman. Um, I'm going to say, you know what I'm going to say, brilliant provocation. Provocation. And there we are. So really what I'm saying is that um, when you have a, ch a chance to do something, it's often best not to. Dick Dastardly may want you to, but it's quite possible that actually it would be best just, just to do nothing. And to say, yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to do anything at all. I'm just going to... Um, play quiet and sensible moves and you know it'll be all right 
So um, there we are. Um, provocation is part of chess and the silence before the battle is actually psychologically almost the tensest bit, possibly the tensest bit of it. The tensest parts are when one side is winning or losing, of course, you feel incredibly tense. And yeah, and, and, and I mean, actually, the, I think Queen G4 check is even better. Is it? Is Queen G4 check even better for some reason? Uh, why can't he go King H2? All oh, right, it doesn't matter. Queen G4 check, King H2. Oh, Rook G2 check, I see. Actually, slam. Um... Um, King H2, rook to the check, take, take, four check. Uh, so that is even better actually. It's even cleaner. Okay, I'm going to save this, I'm going to stop the broadcast, and I'm going to send this all. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I will see you back in a fortnight, which presumably, you can see down there, or you perhaps can't see the bottom left of my, sh right of my screen, I'm actually writing on the 1st, because I'm going away this weekend. Um, I will. This will be out on the 8th, I hope, and I will have another column for you on the 22nd. Cheers then.